Welcome to the series of color pencil hacks. Has it ever happened that you're using white to blend a darker color and all the color just transfers to your white, ruining the white and also any other drawing you apply it next to? Well, to fix this, I suggest you use a blank sheet of paper and rotate the pencil on this paper until all the excess color has been removed. And that is it. Now you're left with a pure white shade once again. Now, if you realize that you have to keep sharpening your pencil because it gets dull way too quickly, then change the grip of your pencil. Instead of holding it way too close to the tip, move your fingers further back and keep rotating your pencil while you make your strokes. By this, you'll equalize the pressure and not break your tips while you're coloring. Also, since you're holding the pencil a little further back, the first shade might be lighter. So for that reason, make a second layer with diagonal strokes and there you go. You haven't ruined your pencil and created your desired shade. Have you ever noticed that when you finish coloring, there are these small pieces of pencil around your drawing? Well, if you want to get rid of them without smudging them like this, then just use masking tape to pick up the pieces. Also, don't forget to use different sides of the masking tape to avoid smudging. This will leave you with a clean sheet of paper without any of those extra pieces. And that is it. You can use a solvent such as baby oil to blend. I know this tip works with Prisma colors, but I'm not sure if it works with every brand of color pencil. So to use this hack, just dip a brush or q-tip in baby oil and wipe the axis on a tissue. If you're using a q-tip, then apply it in circular motion and keep rotating the q-tip. Also, avoid using thin paper such as printer paper because this may cause the solvent to bleed right through. And here you can see how effective baby oil is. This tip is used to make fur with an X-Acto knife. Start by covering the base area with white, then take whatever color you want the fur to be for the second layer. You can also make gradients or sections of various colors for the second layer. Then use an X-Acto knife and start making strokes in small patches for the fur. Make sure to not press too hard because that may cause the paper to rip from beneath. Also, this tip works with Prisma colors, but I'm not sure about other brands. So if you end up trying it with a different brand, let me know the results in the comment section. This tip is useful for details and textures. If you have an old pen that doesn't work anymore, then it is perfect to make patterns on the paper. Then go over it using a color pencil. As you can see, the indent made with the pen allows the pattern to be visible when you apply the pencil color. And this trick is best used to add details on cloth like this. You may have realized that when you try to blend two colors, sometimes it is very hard to get a smooth transition. In order to fix this, use a circular motion and press lightly as you move closer to the center. Then take the second color and overlap the first color a little. Make sure to press lightly while doing this, and then you can continue to press hard as you move away from the center. Now make a second layer using the same overlapping trick, and after about two or three layers, it should look something like this. If you're using a pencil to draw the outlines, you may realize that when you color it in, the pencil marks become even darker. And the color pencil tends to smudge the pencil together, creating a very messy look. So instead, draw super lightly and then use a kneading eraser to lighten up those marks. A kneading eraser helps erase all the outlines evenly. And once you color it in, this is what the final version looks like. There is no dark outlines and it looks very nice for a realistic drawing. Now, if you want crisp edges to your drawing, then use a masking tape and apply it to the border of your drawing. If you don't have a masking tape, you can even use a clear tape like this, but you just have to decrease the strength of it. And do this by applying the tape on a different surface before actually placing it on the paper. Then once you color inside the tape lines, you can remove the tape and see how crisp the edges are. This is what the drawing looks like after you have removed the masking tape. And here you can see I am removing the clear tape. You can also see how the paper is undamaged because we have decreased the strength. You can use a white gel pen for highlights on your drawings. If you don't own a white gel pen, you can use a regular whiteout. So first, get a scrap piece of paper and take some white ink out. 
Then take a non-working pen, dip it in the ink, and apply highlights on your desired drawing. Keep in mind to do this process fairly quickly because the ink tends to dry up. And in case that happens, take some more ink out on your scrap piece of paper and repeat the process.